Thank you for, for this nice introduction. Um, let, let me just uh, state two uh, issues or two um, things that, that, uh, that have come up uh, during the previous talk. One is uh, about laws. You, know, you, you said that physicists believe that there exist laws, really exist laws kind of. So there, there is now an ongoing debate and an increasing debate um, asking whether from lawlessness law, laws might emerge. Um, where I'm quite aware that the word emergence uh, might cause some, some pain in you, but um, I, I, I just state two, two results. One is Ramsey theory, saying that all kinds of correlations can be found, all kinds of uh, properties can be realized in any set, as long as this set is uh, irrational. So you can have all the laws you like. If, if you allow me to give you all data, all, all data sets that I like from, from Ramsey theory. And the second result is that in an infinite random sequence, there is an infinite number of times regular sequences of all lengths and all height. So to speak with Borges, and every random real is uh, a total universal library. Uh, so we might just be living on such a sequence. This is uh, so. So so this is I, I think very modern and very new to speculate that there are no laws. It's very Greek also, by the way. You know, coming back to, because the the, the Greek teleology. Um, I spoke about a void or chaos, or chaos you know, from which the gods were created and the gods brought the laws. This is a very Greek idea. Just one god, Eros. And Gears and Gear. No more. I think the Greeks had a lot of gods. There's a funny there's a funny title. I find this funny title by by, um, uh, by um, a French um, uh, philosopher of, of, of Greek uh, uh, in, in history, and he, he, say, he thinks, do the Greeks, have the Greeks believed in their own gods? That's, that's also an interesting question. Um, I forgot about the other issue that was mentioned, but, pardon? The gods? No, no. Thank you. I, I, let, let's, let's just start with the talk. Let's just start with entanglement. Now, I, I find myself in a totally strange position because, uh, in my opinion, there are so many misconceptions of entanglement are mentioned. You know, up here, that it's, it's, it's very difficult uh, uh, to, uh, to probably um, say different things. Uh, of course, the proponents of these misunderstandings are not here, uh, so they won't hear it. Uh, but uh, let me let me try to straighten that out. Um, so some of the issues what one could ask in confronted with the history of uh, quantum mechanics and in particular history of entanglement, uh, I have just listed. You know, first of all, what is entanglement? Then the question, 
how can entanglement be produced? How can a state breathe in and out of entanglement if that is possible? And and what what uh, how to interpret breathing in and out of entanglement? There is another question: What is the connection between entanglement and non-locality, or in general, entanglement and um, correlations? This is part of some confusions here. And um, has entanglement finally has entanglement a role in measurement? And I'm just going to roam around this question. Yeah. Actually, at first I, I intended not to have any slides because uh, these slides, you know, they, they tend to be pervasive and they throw tons of symbols on you, which uh, at least I am not able to comprehend. So uh, all of uh, the number total number of my slides will be eight. Let's see how I fare with that. Let's come to the definition. And it's always good to, uh, to look back in time and see who was probably the first imagining entanglement. Schrödinger in his Naturwissenschaft uh, papers, uh, 1935, über die gegenwärtige Situation in der Quantenmechanik, that was uh, also uh, when uh, the cat so-called paradoxon was introduced. I mean, they were uneasy, you know, they were very uneasy. Uh, Schrödinger and Einstein and De Pauli with the new quantum mechanics of Born, you know, not to mention Bohr. Bohr was, by, by the way, we are in uh, Brussels here, and Brussels uh, was uh, the venue uh, of two Solvay conferences. Uh, one, you will see a picture of the Metropole. I was lucky enough to, to go to the Metropole yesterday, Cafe Metropole. And uh, I always like the atmosphere there. And uh, there were very few uh, visitors, so I could take a 360 panorama photo. And you will see that uh, in a minute. Um, uh, 19, uh, 1911 was the first uh, quantum Solvay meeting. I believe it was also the first Solvay meeting. Uh, the funny thing is they didn't invite Planck. I don't know why they did not invite Planck. And they invited Poincaré on a very late stage. Uh, but they invited, for instance, Hasenhörl, who was from my university in, in, in Vienna. And of course, also Einstein. And, um, but, but that was a time when Schrödinger wasn't really uh, on the scene with quantum mechanics, but later he became, of course, more well known. Um, now I would have, uh, I, I would like to tell you some anecdotes about uh, Schrödinger's appearance in Zurich, but I, I understand from that, and you can ask me about that a little bit later. Because, because by, by the way, I, I was just, you know, when I, when I met uh, people here, I was just approaching and coming, they said, oh, you are supposed to, oh, are you still active, you know? That, uh, that was a shock to me because I, I thought, <laughs> I think I'm still active and people. Um, it, it reminded me a little bit, I don't want to compare myself to, uh, to uh, Specker, but, but Specker told me once, well, you know, when, uh, when people see me, they say, oh, you are still alive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And we, we have, what, what I did recently, despite this, uh, this, this was uh, stimulated by the topic entanglement. But what I recently uh, did was, for instance, papers with, uh, with Abbott and Kaluga on extensions, or what could be humbly, no, not so humbly called extensions of the culture spectrum, <laughs> where, where we show that any two non-collinear, non I mean a state, as you know, a pure, I'm talking only about pure states. I, I, I think uh, mixed states are empty. So, so I, I will only talk about pure states now. And the pure state can be um, formalized by a vector or by a linear one dimension subspace spanning, spanned by the vector or by the projection operator. 
corresponding to this uh, linear one dimensional subspace. And, and if you have two such vectors, so, so you know, quantum mechanics is really, in that way, it's all about vectors. And things that can be constructed from, ve from vectors, let's say, from the Arctic product, like projection operators from unit vectors. So I was just going to, uh, to uh, talk uh, uh, over coffee with the, with the gentleman sitting here and saying, probably in 400 years from now they will laugh at us because they will, they will, they will think, well, they have uh, talked so much ontologic, epistemic and voodoo about vectors, you know. How can you talk such a long time, one century talking about vectors? Um, anyway, so, so uh, our insight is if you have two non-collinear, non-autonomous vectors, so they shouldn't be like this, then everything is clear, they shouldn't be like, like that, they shouldn't be autonomous. But as long as they are non-collinear and non-autonomous, uh, you can prove that if you prepare a system, you can constructively prove that it finds a set of vectors, um, which is finite. But you have to add, these sets are adaptive, it depends on the location of, on the relative location of the vector. Um, you can prove that if you prepare a system to be in that state, uh, you can show uh, that, that this state is totally value indefinite. This is, in my opinion, an advancement over, over uh, Specker, because uh, the Cauchy Specker uh, theorem said that. Um, Somewhere, globally, in this global two-valued state, uh, there's a breakdown of contextuality, of, of, of non-contextuality. And, and so, somehow, there is, if, if, if you tabulate um, the truth values, there has to be some bridge of non-contextuality in this tabulation. And, and we can show that um, we, we can actually locate the vector. Now, there exists the theorem of uh, Pitovsky, was that uh, uh, value indefiniteness theorem uh, in Journal of Mathematical Physics from uh, the 1990s, um, which he proved uh, there is similar to result, but we can prove it by assuming, by still giving room to value indefiniteness. So, so he, he proves uh, that this, um, um, with the co worker that, that you can not find the two valued states. But the two, so the violation can be, can happen anywhere in that set, you know, where it's been reproved that it happens right at that point, which is of interest. So if you want to produce um, random number generators, you can actually pretend that if you assume quantum mechanics and make reasonable assumptions and, and, um, and, um, and use a three-state um, three, uh, um, system. Um, uh, this is certified by an extension theorem of the Cauchy Specker theorem. And also, the second thing I was doing, uh, this is just announcing and making some, some marketing a little bit, but you might be interested in that. At, at some point, uh, I was uh, at another conference in Sweden, and um, I was getting a little bit nervous about uh, certain games people make about bad inequalities and so on and so forth, contextual inequalities. And, and I, I decided to write up a review article on um, the Pitovsky approach or the Bull uh, approach to um, the bad inequalities. So this is a huge article. Uh, which I very explicitly uh, derive all kinds of, uh, of inequalities which are associated with uh, quantum breaches of classical probability amplitudes. And probably I'll come back to that later if I still have time. So let's concentrate now finally on, on uh, entanglement. Now, entanglement was kind of for the first time, at least to my knowledge, observed by Schrödinger. And he said that very clearly what entanglement is all about. He states that, let me read that, the whole is in a definite state. So you have a couple of particles, and they form a state. 
And the whole, the entirety of these particles is in a definite state. The parts then individually are not. That is very important. Yeah, so, so it doesn't talk about correlations. Correlations are some feature, some, in, if you say this in quantum mechanics, I would believe uh, necessary, but not sufficient. You know, the, the most important part in the definition of this is that the paths are individ taken individually are not in a definite state, but the entire thing is in a definite state. How can you understand this? All the information in such a state is encoded in the relational properties among those paths. In German, if somebody understands German, the, the original statement is, das Ganze ist in einem bestimmten Zustand, die Teile für sich genommen nicht. Okay, let me rephrase that, or let Bennett, Charles Bennett rephrase that, that you have a complete knowledge of the whole without knowing the state of any one part. Say this word again, it's, it's almost identical. That a thing can be in a definite state even though its parts were not. It's not a complicated idea, but it's an idea that nobody would ever think of. I wouldn't have thought of. Uh, and let's see if this thing's. Oh, no, it doesn't. Let me just uh, try to. Uh, Just to make things very clear, let me let me just uh, okay. So I have I think that's okay. Knowledge of the whole without knowing the state of any. Geringer found out and pointed out in 1935 was that you could have a complete knowledge of the whole without knowing the state of any one part. And then a thing could be in a, a, a definite state, okay. Okay. even though it's. That I pointed out in 1935. But Schrodinger found out. Was that we have a complete knowledge of the whole without knowing the state of any one part. That a thing could be in a, a, a definite state even though its parts were not. That idea was, was never properly explained. People don't understand this at this point. It's not a it's not a complicated idea, but it's an idea that nobody would ever think of. Sorry, I stopped that too early. Do you want to keep it? No, thanks. So, I hope that message came through very clearly. And of course the question is, uh, how come can one think uh, about that? Uh, and, and one of the archetypal demosenters known for entanglement, of course, is the bank states. Or are the bank states? This is just a normalization, and here you have 0, 1, minus 1, 0, which is just one bank state. You can have plus here also. And then you have uh, the complete basis in 4D space. So this is uh, a, bit, a bit state living in two dimensional input space. And these are just the tensor product states here. And uh, you have the complete. Basic states, and uh, and and um, one of the ideas is that 
that uh, for, for instance with the minor state, let's, let's concentrate on the minor state now. Um, this can be specified basically by saying whenever you measure at least in two directions the system, then uh, those uh, properties are on, on one system are, are converse. So if on one system you measure zero, on the other system you measure one, and vice versa if you measure on one system one, on the other you measure zero. This is a totally relational information. It's not individual. The individuality is, is realized because it's in a 50-50 mixture of, let's say, the first particle being in state a zero or one. And if you look, at, so 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 this is a, this is the kind of uh, formalization of, of this idea in terms of vectors. And of course, this is a vector because this if this is a zero one and this is a one zero, then you end up uh, with a zero uh, zero one zero. Okay. And here, and here, this is of course uh, minus uh, zero, one, zero, one. So you end up in, with this vector here. You have the normalization. You end up with one over square root of um, zero minus one, one, zero. Um. <coughs> now, but this is just a vector as any other vector. And you can, you can, uh, you could in principle interpret this as uh, a coherent superposition between these classically non-coexist coexistent states. So, so basically, you can think that you could think that um, the entangled state is just a coherent superposition of classically mutually disallowed exclusive states and this of course can be used for entanglement production and one of the schemes for writing for generating these kind of states uh, is here you have a beam splitter where you produce the 50-50 mixture and then you have uh, two nonlinear crystals uh, going to uh, different integrators, and you have the integrators and outcomes to state. Mind you, there's not very specific. There's nothing specific. I mean, the only specific thing that should that there should be is that this state shouldn't be uh, the product state of two single particles. This is the formalization that you cannot have the product. And, and there is a, in, in a Merlin book, Quantum Computer Science, there's a very nice derivation of, of how, how that can be done. I mean, you can always write an arbitrary two particle state by writing, let's say, alpha i uh, sum from i equals from 1 to 4. Um, yeah. Here you have the state alpha i, um, and uh, well, let's say alpha uh, one equals uh, zero zero, and you have an exigographic um, enumeration until alpha four. You have one one, and and then you you can what Bernoulli does is he he defines the product states. That is, for instance, uh, A1 zero plus no, A0 zero, zero plus, um, or, or let's, yeah, A0 zero, zero plus A11 one, one, and um, makes the product here um, B0 zero, zero plus B11 one, one, and uh, you end up. Uh, with also with a sum, but with coefficients here, and you compare the coefficients. It, is that clear? You know, that's, that's pretty clear, isn't it? Huh? So you have, for instance, A0, zero, B0, zero, zero, 0, you know, until you have uh, A1, B1, one, 1, 1. 
And you compare this with those coefficients. And you find that this, for instance, is uh, alpha 1 and this is alpha 4. And for this general state to be realized by a product state, you can, under certain assumptions, um, um, derive an equality. And the equality is that alpha 1 times alpha 4 equals alpha 3, no, alpha 2 times 2 times alpha 3. Now, in this case, or in all these cases, these are just um, alpha 2, alpha 3. No, this is just, um, this is alpha 2 and this is alpha 3. So alpha 2 times alpha 3 is 1 over half, 1, one over 2. And uh, the outer states are 0, so uh, 1 half is not equal to 0. And that says that this state cannot be produced by a product state, and that's it. You know, Th this is the only criterion that, uh, that, that you could um, give for two particles, I mean, generalization is straightforward for many particles. When such a state, the coherent superposition of micro apartheid state is entangled or not. And um, you, can, you can then uh, get a generalized scheme uh, with unitary transformation um, of a single incoming state in the single incoming pass. Um, and, and you can get all kinds of uh, states you like, also all kinds of tank states. So this is a very straightforward way of producing um, entanglement in, uh, in, uh, for, for two particles. And uh, then one could ask, well, if this is so, uh, one could also consider um, going from an entangled state, because this is just a vector in 4D space, to a non-entangled state. And the non-entangled state would be a typical non-entangled state would be here, uh, let's say, 1, 1, you know? This is time. 1, 1 is just 1, 0, 0, 0. And so this non-entangled state is just a unitary transformation away from the entangled state. Or vice versa. Whenever you have a non-entangled state, you can you can produce an entangled state by, by the unitary transformation. Of course, it's not concrete. This one gives the paths are, are apart. But it's just a unitary transformation. And it's very easy uh, to construct um, by, by two unitary transformations um, a process where you breathe in and out of entanglement and individuality. So, for instance, you start with a state which is non entangled, where the individual constituents have definite properties. You apply one unitary transformation. There's the U, and you end up, with, let's say you start with E1, and, and you apply this unitary transformation and end up in one of those bell class states. And then you apply a second transformation which breathes out of entanglement in the, into individuality, and uh, you again end up in the second. Uh, in, in one of the second passive states. You know, you can easily, easily introduce that. The, the, the technique is, uh, in, in, from linear algebra, it's just easy to, uh, to produce that because both uh, uh, um, the canonical uh, Cartesian basis and the bait basis are both orthonormal basis. And um, uh, it's, it's very easy to, to write down uh, unitary transformations from one autonomic basis to the other. I'm just, I'm just uh, this trick here. Um, 
And so, so you can you can breathe in and out all states coming or uh, symbolized uh, by uh, the Cartesian basis uh, in transforming them swiftly into the bell basis states and vice versa and so on. So you breathe in and out of entanglement, but entanglement, once you are in entanglement, you have no individuality of the constituent. And then the constituent, so, so you kind of scramble the information. And then you re encode them, scramble again towards, and so on, back and forth. But Mind you, it's just a vector rotated. What what else can it be, you know, in 4D space? What is it individual? Ah, you, you know, just as Schrödinger pointed out, if you if you have entanglement, the entanglement is defined as a total uh, non-definiteness of the individual constituent. Yeah, that's, that, that's the message. You can have in quantum mechanics, this is, this is exactly what, what, uh, what Bennett also mentioned. Um, in, in quantum mechanics, you can have states uh, which have totally relational encodings, um, but then the price is the price you have to pay because this is a zero sum game. You cannot, you cannot gain information with unitary transformations. That is exactly the problem with measurement. You, know? you cannot lose any information, but you can also not gain any information. You have to permute it. Unitary transformations are just uh, non-preserving uh, permutations. So, so you permute from relationality of information and among constituents, correlations among constituents, onto individuality of the parts. And then you have individuality, and you retransform them, you re-scramble them back into re relational informations. And that can be, that is, it's almost trivial, you know? Pro probably you are bored now, because I'm telling you tri trivial things. So, just to clarify, are you bumping up the dimension? You're doubling the dimension to be able to maintain the individuality? No, no the, I always stay within for that, in this case, for that mentioned bigger space, I I just um, uh, I just rotate from um, product states, which are symbolized by Cartesian basis, into entangled states, uh, which are symbolized by the band basis. But this, these are just rotations. There is nothing. You know, I, I tried to, I have written recently an article on quantum hocus pocus. You know, I, I tried to, to, uh, to put things down to the bare essentials. You know, there's nothing mystic about that. There's just the rotation of, of a vector. You know, a particular ro rotation. And I, I mean, this is my experience with, uh, with, uh, with mathematicians. I, I once, um, for instance, at the, at the cafeteria in Vienna, we have very good geometers in Vienna, and I tried to, uh, to explain quantum mechanics uh, to one of those guys, and he stared at me behind him and he said, but this is trivial algebra, linear algebra. <laughs> you wouldn't know how many physical letters exist who exploit just simple chapters of um, of high much finite with uh, undergrad text. Five minutes. Okay. Yeah. The question is if it can be the only measurement. And this is an issue that has been mentioned already by Schrödinger in, 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 in these articles, you know, in the in the Naturwissenschaft articles. Because um, um, if if um, you interact, if, if the measurement apparatus interacts with, um, with the object, then you end up, after the interaction, with it mostly with an entangled state. And this entangled state is characterized by having no individual property. In particular, no individual property of the original object. 
So you end up necessarily in, uh, in, 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 in very indefiniteness on the object which you want to measure. Because all the information is transferred into the relational properties. Um, and if you nest that, this nesting has been first proposed by von Neumann in, in the 20s, in his uh, book, Grundlagen der Quantenmechanik. And it has been uh, later emphasized by, but he cites uh, von Neumann uh, by Everett. You know, if you, if you put the apparatus again in the bigger box and you assume that this is subject to the unitary evolution, you are not going to go anywhere uh, 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 to, the, to, to some uh, loss of information, to some irreversible process. So the question is, where exactly does measurement happen? But even not ask, uh, say, uh, not, not being able to answer this, we can, we can surely say that if this interaction takes place, the individuality of the object is lost. And how can you, how can you regain this? This is, this is um, uh, a subject of a very nice article by London and Bauer, uh, which has been translated twice, contained in the... Uh, the the, the consolidated translation is in the Wiener Zurich volume. Thank you for your attention. I mean, I, may, may I respond? You, you, are, you asked me a very important question, I believe, uh, already uh, during uh, coffee time. You asked, how, does, how is this connected? How is the bell, bell thing connected? And the bell, you know, uh, how is bell connected to entanglement? And, and this is just because uh, in the EPR scheme, um, uh, you, have, you need entanglement because you need some relational properties of the particles. The development policies you are just discussing measurement outcomes, you're not discussing entanglement. Yeah, but, uh, but in the, in the, you're, uh, I mean, you're mentioning that one discusses just the outcomes, not entanglement. But, but usually, uh, in this case, the, the relational properties among those particles are used to constitute what, what EPR call an element of physical reality. I mean, uh, I don't want to discuss really the intricacies of, of the EPR because Einstein didn't like EPR. He, he said this was uh, written by, by, by Podolsky and he has discussed this, but he's not happy with, with the paper, you know, this is another issue. Uh, but um, but, uh, but the, 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 the issue is uh, with this EPR, you, have, you need entanglement um, in, in the sense that you have only relational properties, you know. A, it, 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 it occurs twice. It occurs uh, with individuality, so there is no individuality of the constituents. So, so the outcomes occur totally at random if you start with that state. As, as I have tried to. That's a violation of Bellman process. So yes. My, my, I, I was making the question of the relation between Bellman qualities and Cochrane spectrum. Now, you can violate Bellman qualities with Bell states. Bell states are quantum states, they're not plasma states. Yes. So you're not, there is, yes. you're not showing the relation, you're just yes. saying that Bell states violate Bell inequalities. And my question was related to the relation between Bell inequalities and the public perspective. Yeah. And, and my answer, I mean, this, this leads me to one of my, my uh, one, one things I like to discuss uh, most nowadays is. Uh, to two valued measures and how to create classical probabilities. You know, because classical probabilities are just convex sums of extreme situations which you can um, uh, call two valued measures or truth assignments. And, and um, in the configuration um, uh, that, that are, um, which are dealt with by uh, the Bell inequalities, uh, you still have two valued measures. But you can use these two valued, and you can use these two valued measures for guessing the bounds. This is what Bidovsky called bull bell inequalities, because bull 
uh, looked for search for linear bounds he gave linear bounds it's unclear whether you can really derive all those bounds in particular if you go to to more configurations uh, we are we are just at the moment discussing that but um, uh, so so uh, but whereas in the in the Cauchy-Spiegel configuration, uh, the catastrophe happens, or the quasi-catastrophe, that uh, you can prove that uh, there are no uh, two-valued measures on certain finite configurations whatsoever. You know, this is this is a total breakdown of classicality. Uh, you cannot construct any. Uh, so 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 the, the method to construct classical probabilities. Ah, this, this is one thing to say. Uh, in quantum mechanics, Kolmogorov probability breaks down. I, I would say just on the contrary, you know. You can derive the quantum probabilities from the Kolmogorovian probabilities. This is the Gissel theorem by assuming that co measurable classical universes are Kolmogorovian probabilistic. So whatever you can measure. Uh, you can you can make measure simultaneously should behave according to classical laws. And if you paste together these mini universes, you end up with the Born rule. So in a certain sense, Kolmogorovian probabilities are still there, but they are they are just layered on the context. Relates with the lattice of algebra. Where the lattice is present in the right? Yeah, I mean, uh, for, for dimensions, from dimension 3 on, the, the problem is that the Cauchy Specker theorem and the Giesel theorem uh, couldn't be, uh, ca cannot operate on, on 2D because, because if you have um, oh, orthogonal systems, orthogonal uh, bases, uh, these are only in. In not connected as, uh, in, in 2D. But from 3D on, you can connect them. Like this is an intertwine, you can intertwine. So they connect at, at, uh, in 3D at one uh, leg, and then from 4D on, you can have more legs. But, uh, so, and, and then you can, can construct. Um, th this is really why all these theorems need. Uh, three-dimensionality, uh, to connect the bases. But there, there's another thing which, which should be mentioned and people don't realize. And this is already contained in the in the Koshi Specker paper, but uh, I think very few people read the original Koshi Specker paper. You, you don't need non-existence of two-valued states to prove what they call non-contextuality. I would rather with Spidowski call it um, in, in, uh, in, in the Germanism. You just need a configuration which has a non-separating set of two-valued states. And you can you can easily create that, it's much smaller. But of course, I mean, if you have no states at all, that's, that's very plakative. Because you were talking about individuality and you're making certain disposition like so, so th those are entangled states, right? The, the one you wrote, right. Of, the, the bell, right. Of, and of, of course, you have to attend to some. Yes. So you, 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 you're, you're talking about two particles there, right? Yes. Which are entangled. And each particle is a superposition in itself. The particles, when. Uh, the, the way I see it, you have, if you just look at this state here, yeah. this is not superposed. It's just that no. the first part no. is in the zero of the one. And, and one if you zero. take two such product states and superpose them. Yeah, okay, but that comes from superposing the, the, the quantum state, zero, one, the exactly. quantum state, one, zero. And, and I, all, all I wanted to say, it's a very critical statement. For my son, you know, all I wanted to say is that you can pro produce all entangled states, yeah. all entangled yeah, states, yeah. or all states, you yeah. know, all well, states. I make my by, by the superposition of, of such things. Okay, so, so so my question is, if you have a quantum superposition, uh, I, do 
do you think a quantum superposition position is possible? Do I think that a quantum superposition is a particle? No, I, th I think that certain superpositions correspond to multipartite states, to states of a multipartite system. So, so I, I feel, you know, what, once the, the issue is what do I identify with the, with the uh, <coughs> Cartesian basis or with the product state? Of two particles, so I, I have uh, it, it, this is somehow arbitrary. So I, so I well, once, but once I identified that, I have all the product states, um, and there is a unique correspondence between the product states and the particle properties, and then I just super superpose the product states in certain superpositions. In two things, in, in with two particles uh, satisfying these relationships are product states, and some are not. Uh, and those who are not, by definition, are called entangled. Okay, let's thank Ashmi.